Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and today we're going to add another entry into our Vintage Levi's series by talking about one of Levi's red-headed stepchildren. The worst product line maybe ever. I don't know. You decide. Levi's moving on jeans. Let's get into it. Now, Levi's has had a long history, 100 plus years, so it makes sense to start and end different product lines, um, and they have many times over. Uh, the product line we're looking at right now is the one that sort of came after the Orange Tab line. The Orange Tab line was produced from about 1971 and all the way up till 1999. Uh, but in the midst of all of that, Levi's developed a different product line called the Movin' On Jean. It began as a pair within the Orange Tab line, so there is some bleed between the two, but then was launched as its own separate thing in 1976. So Movin' On became Levi's attempt at getting into big box stores and becoming more of a general apparel brand rather than a Western jean brand. 1981, they signed a deal with JC Penney to get their jeans and their apparel from the Movin' On line into JC Penney's. So that was their big foray into the big box store general apparel market. And at the time in the early 80s, Levi's sales were way down. They had competition from guys like Calvin Klein and other European makers. It became a bit more crowded in the jean and fashion jean space. Though they still were considered one of the most iconic American companies, uh, they still made stuff for like the 80 Olympics and 84 Olympics that were even branded with the Movin' Online branding. But with all things that are attempted to be made universal, the quality did decrease. And it's kind of funny because there's a lot of people that think that the orange tab line quality was such a significant step down from the red tab lines. Um, this was basically descending into hell. All right, that might be a little bit dramatic, but there's a lot of denim heads out there that just won't even look at this stuff, unfortunately. The Levi's Movin' Online lasted until about the mid 80s where it was phased out as they began to re-emphasize the 501 and move on to bigger and better things. But for that season, it did offer us some really interesting and maybe in some cases fairly compelling fashion. Uh, some really interesting things that Levi's decided to do that were way unorthodox for Levi's. And to get a better sense of the sort of marketing and the, the flavor of this, take a look at these ads. Now, I don't know what they were moving on from. Maybe it was they were moving on from the Levi traditions and trying to expand into New Horizon. That's probably likely what it was about. But what you do see here is a much more metropolitan, less cowboy aesthetic. And that is ultimately what you got. There's probably more influence from the European jean makers here than they, Levi's would want to admit but that's really what it looks like. So how do you identify a pair of moving on jeans? Well, if you happen to have a dead stock pair like I have here, you just look at the tag. <laughs> it says moving on. But another thing is that it says moving on right here, spelled out on the back left back pocket. It's a very common thing for moving on jeans to have, though it is not at all universal. Here we have a pair of moving on jeans. How do I know? Because I have the dead stock tag right here but there is no moving on spell out to be found. And that's because this was probably a bit earlier than the, um, I think this is like, I can probably see here. This one was about 1979. And so they uh, probably weren't branding as much as they did in the early 80s. 
But this is the Prospector gene. You can see it's very different from a lot of this uh, other traditional Levi stuff. A lot of the Move It On stuff is considered very cheap and poorly made. They decided to put a lot more polyester, so there's a lot more stretch in the jeans than the previous Levi's series had done. And so you get a lot of that cheap feeling. It sort of falls apart a bit more closer to the modern fashion uh, jeans that we have today that don't seem to last particularly long if, you know, even a season before that they've worn out through the crotch or they're stretched out into weird ways. But that's kind of what you've got with this. It's sort of the precursor to modern jeans. Another way you can identify Levi's moving on jeans are the arcuates. The arcuates in these cases are almost entirely unique. It's very hard to find the same arcuate on a pair of moving on jeans out there. Um, in fact, I think I've owned probably 40 to 50 pairs of of these and I don't think any of them have the same arcuate design uh, which is a big deal when it comes to Levi's because that arcuate uh, that v-shaped arcuate is so synonymous with the brand this was a particularly uh, stark difference between the rest of the Levi's models and brands and the Levi's move it on jeans now there are a lot of things that still stay the same with these pairs of jeans like they still have the Levi's tab on the back they still have the care tag under the left pocket here as was normal for 70s and 80s jeans. They still have the um, embossed buttons with Levi's on them, etc. But there are some significant differences, like the fact that there are very few that have patches. And when they do, they look like this. And one of the reasons this is so interesting is because I had heard forever that Levi's had stopped using leather patches in the early 60s, late 50s and that they no longer did that. And any patch that was, you know, from that era, if you find it leather, it's probably fake. Well, that's why I always thought these were fake, but they're not fake. In fact, Levi's brought back the leather patch for the moving on tag, and you have leather patches. Now, with the leather patches, they certainly aren't the same patch as the red tab line or even some of the orange tab lines. Um, they are different. They don't emphasize the size or model number on there. That stuff is found on the inside care tag or on the outside uh, marketing if you have a dead stock pair. Uh, but they are interesting because they definitely look unlike most other Levi's jeans. In fact, they're probably the only one that ever did this size patch, at least not until the 2000s. Now, traditionally, when you're trying to identify a pair of Levi's, you might use the tab on the back to determine whether or not it's a red tab or an orange tab. Unfortunately, with moving on jeans, there are a ton of different colors. In fact, I have a blue tab right here with silver lettering. I have a black tab with white lettering. I have a blue tab with gold lettering. And I have a white tab with blue lettering. Lots of different varieties underneath this big umbrella. So unfortunately, this does not help you. In fact, there are moving on jeans with orange tabs because the moving on jean came from the orange tab line. So even more confusing. Now, generally speaking, I think it's true to say that the blue tab is most associated with moving on jeans. So if you see a blue tab with silver or gold lettering, that's probably indicative of moving on. Well, I hope you found some of this information helpful and useful. There's really not a lot of information on moving on jeans out there. I spent a long time trying to research this. I even had to contact Levi's themselves to ask some questions and get some answers about some dates and stuff like that. So really hard. So I hope this was somewhat helpful and enlightening about the Levi's moving on brand. And I hope it helps you in when you're searching for Levi's and you're selling Levi's and collecting Levi's. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.